Hey everyone, it's Don Harkey from People Centered Consulting Group. We're going to start in just a couple minutes here. We're going to do a live event where we're going to talk a little bit about how to be scrappy. Uh, how do we as business owners be scrappy? So we'll just wait till a few more people here join us and we'll get started in just a minute. This is the part where I stand here awkwardly waiting for people to join. Coming in, coming in now. So exciting. Excited to see everyone. We'll give a couple more minutes for everybody to join in. I hope we don't crash the internet. All right. Let's get started. Obviously, you can post your questions on here anytime you want to. This is a Facebook Live, uh, so I'm, I'm actually here right now talking to you, unless you watch this later, and then it's a recording. So that's how Facebook Live works, is that sometimes it's live and sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, if you're over the age of 40, you're looking at me going, wow, I didn't know that. If you're under the age of 40, you're probably looking at me going, you're an idiot. Uh, that's okay, because we're on Facebook Live now, so we can't take that off. Uh, so here's the thing. We're talking about businesses being scrappy right now. Uh, in terms of the economic conditions of the virus, everything else that's hitting up right now. How do we as business owners just get really scrappy? That's the question. So when I think about the word scrappy, what do I think about? I think about when I used to play tennis. I used to play tennis in high school. Uh, I was, uh, it was competitive high school tennis. I was one of the better players on one of the worst teams in the city, in the city of Omaha. Uh, so I got to play a lot of really, really good players from Omaha. Uh, so I would always end up playing the number one or number two player from other teams all over the place. And I can remember I was playing this one guy from a team that was we actually probably had a chance in beating. Uh, and I was really excited about that. Like I can finally beat somebody maybe. And I'm playing this guy and he's just better than me. He's just killing me. Uh, now in high school, you play one set and it's an eight game pro set. So you're playing to eight. It's kind of weird. But I was down probably zero three, love three and just getting my butt kicked. It just He was just killing me. And he was just hitting the ball harder than I could. He was driving me back and driving me back. And I'm trying to hit and I'm just trying to keep up with stuff. And finally, I just I just needed like a little break during one of the points, literally. And I got and I hit this really, really tall lob. And the lob just goes way up in the air. And it just bounces on the other end of the net. And this guy looks underneath it and he gets this weird look on his face like, oh, all right, I get to slam this ball. And he gets underneath it, underneath it, and he's bam! And he hits it right into the net. And it hit me in that moment watching him. I'm like, man, I'm just getting my butt kicked. This guy's personality, everything I'd seen from him, he loves to hit the ball as hard as he can. He just goes out swinging. I thought maybe if I just hit lobs to him, I wonder how he would respond. I wonder if he would hit him into the net because it didn't seem like he could lay off that shot, like just hit it back normally. He tried to put everything he had into it and his form wasn't really very good either. So I went and I served the next shot and he hit a ball hard to me next time and I hit a ball way up into the air and it goes over and bounces and he goes up to it like this and bam, hits it right into the net again. I'm like, wow, okay, now I'm onto something. So I serve the ball to him again, he hits it to me, I hit a lob, bam, into the net. I win the game. So I'm like, wow, okay, like I actually won a game. I took a game from this guy by hitting these lobs. And the guy starts looking, and he, the guy actually starts talking back to me. He's like, hey, what are you doing? You know, that's not how this game is played. And I start to think, man, I'm starting to get in this guy's head. Like, he's real, I'm really starting to get in his head. And he starts getting mad. So he serves it to me, and I lob it back immediately. And so he goes up and slams it into the net. And now he's getting mad. He's getting frustrated. And he throws his racket down. And he comes over, what are you doing? And he's just yelling at me and screaming at me. And I'm just like, hey, I'm winning. I, I can't believe this. I could, like, actually, maybe I can come back and beat this guy. So he starts getting really, really frustrated. After a while, he says, well, how do you like it? And he starts hitting lobs back to me. And now I'm, I'm playing my game. Like, this is awesome. Like, we're just hitting lob, lob. And we proceeded to play probably what had to be the longest high school tennis match in the history of tennis. I don't know how long we were out there, but it was for forever. Because neither one of us would hit the ball low. We were both just hitting these big lobbing shots. 
Well, I'm patient. We're playing my game. Uh, my game is slow. My game isn't fast. His game is fast and hit the ball hard. And now he's adjusting to how he's playing to have to play to me. It ended up, I ended up beating this guy, right? I actually ended up defeating him. And it was the first, one of the first matches I actually won. Nobody else on our team won. We come off the sideline to give the scores and everything. I'm like, yeah, I won. And my coach, of course, had known the game was already going because I was the last person there because we were playing for so long. My point with that whole story is that this is a good time to be scrappy. I think that's a scrappy story. Now, hitting lobs is not a normal way to win a tennis match. I mean, it's a part of the game, but it's not usually all of the game. Being scrappy means figuring out a way to win, looking at the situation that's currently out there and saying, is there something different that I can do? Is there a different approach to this? The game is not the way that we thought it was going to be when I came into it. It's something that we couldn't have prepared for. There's something different about it. Is there something different that we can do just to be scrappy as all get out? So how do we be scrappy within our organizations? Okay. Well, I know the first thing I know that a lot of business owners right now are thinking about is cash. Organizations are thinking about cash. Hey, you probably, you might have had some events that got canceled. You might have some customers that are backing off a little bit right now. So you might be worried about how do I retain my employees? How do I keep our team together? So let's just, in terms of thinking about cash, let's get scrappy there, okay? Two things. First of all, is start looking at your expenses now. Look at them now and start thinking to yourself, what things can I put on the back burner? What things can I cut here to be able to get through this time? Now be careful here because you don't want to cut things that are going to hurt you long term, right? You want to look for opportunities that maybe you can pull your team together to take care of something short term uh, to be able to help yourself. But if you really look through things, try to find something that's out there. One thing that I know is really common to organizations that we work with is all those software things that you sign up for here and there that you signed up for, you know, it's 40 bucks a month here, 100 bucks a month here. Um, that you try to use, look back and look through your old credit card statements. And sometimes you'll find like five or six of those just hanging out there. Uh, if you haven't done that in a while, that's a good place to do that. Uh, that's a good time to get scrappy. Another way in terms of expenses to get scrappy is to talk to your employees and let them know, let's get scrappy with our expenses. How can we save a little bit of money here and there? Uh, you'll be surprised by some of the ideas that they come up with. Uh, second thing in terms of just being scrappy in general, how do you get more and more scrappy? Uh, it's in terms of finding cash, is uh, the SBA. So right now, and this is just a resource for you, it's out on our, our, our crisis uh, management toolkit right now on our website at peoplecentric.com. Uh, there's a link on there. You can go to the SBA Disaster Fund. And now most areas, have, a lot of areas have been declared as federal disaster areas. There's opportunities to, to borrow money on low interest basis from the SBA. You want to get that, that process started early because it will take a little bit. Uh, but there's some funds available there to help get through those difficult times. So that's part of being scrappy. And second thing I want to really talk to you about being scrappy is how do you innovate, right? What kinds of things can you do to innovate, to do something different? What's your version of the lobs that I just told in the story about winning in the tennis match, right? And maybe one of the ways you can think about innovating right now is what's happening to my customer. It's really tempting in this time as you own an organization or you're a leader inside of an organization to think about how is this impacting us. But really, if you think about it a little bit differently, if you think about it, how is this impacting our customer, then you can really start to look into things a little bit differently. What opportunities are there within this whole thing? Look, none of us would have chosen to have this crisis, but you know, a friend of mine said, actually, he says, you know, don't waste a good crisis. There are opportunities in here for us to innovate, to come up with some different ways to be able to serve our customers. And that's going to start by talking to your customers, serving your customers. What do they need right now? What are potential new customers that are out there that might need you even more now in this current situation? What are customers going to need three months from now or six months from now? They start thinking about that. Think about that as a team and uh, work with each other. By the way, let's take a second because we're Facebook Live right now. So I see those of you who have joined us, please feel free to post questions on here or comments, anything you'd like an answer to. I'll try to help you. Or if it's even something that if I can't answer it right now, I can bring it back to our team and we'd be happy to post it on our toolkit later at a later date. Uh, but just to share, we're just trying to be a resource for as many people out here as possible. And Third point in terms of being scrappy as a leader, and I know this is this one is really, really important. Support your team, right? Support your team. Uh, a lot of times whenever you're in the office, a manager will just walk around the room. You know, you just walk around, how, how's it going? Are you doing okay? Or when somebody comes in, you'll see them, and how was, your, how was your weekend? Did you have a nice weekend? Now that a lot of us are working from home, like I am right now, and our team's working from home, sometimes those conversations go away. 
Uh, so I really encourage you to spend some time reaching out to your team members, spend some extra time calling them one on one, find out how they're doing, um, doing some texting back and forth. I know our company has this really crazy text stream that we we share things. It's usually memes. It's usually stuff about Matt frequently, uh, just because he tends to like that stuff. It just kind of feeds his ego a little bit. I hope he doesn't watch this later, but it's true. He knows it's true. Uh, it's it's that that kind of stuff that just supports each other. Uh, one organ, one leader uh, actually posted a question uh, and, and asked the question, um, "How forthright should I be about the situation?" You know, because this leader I was talking to, and he said, "You know, I'm, I'm actually kind of scared about what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen in terms of how bad this virus is going to get. I don't know how bad it's going to get in terms of the business. I don't know what our future lies. I don't have all the answers. So I'm not sure if I should admit that to my team. Shouldn't I just tell my team, "Hey, I have all the answers. I know what's going on. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Don't worry about it. You're fine." You know, and I said, you know, I think you should share it with your team. Uh, one of the most powerful leadership traits is vulnerability. Uh, Brene Brown calls it courageous vulnerability, as we talked about at our leadership mastermind last week. Uh, it's the idea that we don't always know the answers. And that's actually good for your team because some people on your team, as they're thinking about what can I do in this situation, they're going to want to engage in some problem solving as well. They want to be able to do something. It's terrible to be in a situation where you have no control over it, right? Most of us are in that situation right now, but there are things that we do have some control over. So can we work within our teams to be able to solve some of those problems and start to work together towards it? Uh, so start to challenge them a little bit. Throw things out there that are a difficulty for your team and say, what can you do to help us moving forward? How can we work together to make this work better? Uh, leverage your team. This is an opportunity for you to maybe build your your culture up a little bit, even more than you have it today. Uh, so that's another one for terms of being scrappy. Um, the last thing in terms of, of supporting your own team is just to listen to them, just to spend some time. You may not have all the answers. Uh, sometimes people are just going to have uh, some frustrating times. Uh, I saw my good friend Richard Aulis uh, posted recently. He talked about how the first week everybody was on adrenaline and this thing, okay, we're working from home, that's kind of different. How are we going to do the tools? What's our cadence going to look like in terms of communication? How do we support the client? All these things that are out there. Uh, this thing that looks like it's going to be a little bit longer than just a week. So as we get into the second week and third week, it's going to add some additional challenges for ourselves and we're going to have to think about those challenges. Uh, so just, then just listen to your people, check in with them. Uh, some of them are going to be a little bit lonely working by themselves, uh, especially your extroverts, right? They're going to be challenged because they don't get that feedback constantly. Uh, create times where you just work with your team just to get on a conference call for no reason, with no agenda, just to have an online happy hour or just to have some coffee together or eat lunch together online. There's lots of opportunities for us to socialize via all these different social media tools that we have. Uh, Zoom calls, Google Hangouts, all these different tools that are out there. So make sure you're leveraging your team overall. Last thing in terms of being scrappy is be a community. Support the community. Look, a lot of you remember you know, 9-11. Uh, when 9-11 happened, one of the things that occurred right after 9-11 was people just leaned in hard to support each other. What do you need? What do you need? I can remember my wife and I were actually on a trip to Hawaii, and we were flying back from Hawaii on the second day, I think, that flights were even allowed after 9-11. And I could just remember how much people, just even on the plane, just were t treating each other differently. Of like, what do you need? Can I help you? Do you want this? Uh, the, oh, we had this great taxi driver who on the way back was just like, are you guys okay? Finan are you guys okay? Do you guys have food? I know you guys have been out of town. All this stuff. And it's just like people were just reaching out and helping each other. And that's what we need right now. And I see a lot of that already happening. For yourself, just to be scrappy as a team, Make sure that you have an abundance mindset, right? Think about what you can do to help others, right? Instead of saying, okay, I'm going to go to the grocery store and I'm going to hoard toilet paper, I'm going to hoard food, I'm going to hoard eggs or bottled water for some reason. Still can't figure that one out. Uh, think about, you know, what can I give? How can I support my team? How can I, what can, you know, if you think about it even as a team, one of the things we talked about as a team is, uh, and I told our team this last week is, look, if one of you run out of something, ask the team, like, let's not have one person run out of something and have somebody else on our team have it. Like, let's do this as a team. Let's work together as a team. We started doing this for other companies. Hey, let's just reach out. What do you need? How can we support you? I had an organization reach out this morning. I'm going to reach out to this afternoon. Who's asking for some help and some things. Look, we're not trying to sell anything right now. It's just, let's just help each other out. I think that makes us scrappy as a community. 
because we realize that as these things happen, we can come together and we can work together and we can be the type of community that we really know that we can be, right? Whether you're here in Springfield, 417 Strong, the things that 417 Magazine are doing, Springfield Business Journal are doing, uh, there are fantastic ways to just try to support the community, try to support each other. Um, I think that we're just gonna have to lean into each other for all of these things, help us to be scrappy. So I put that out there as a, as a call. So if you need something as an organization, you know, reach out to us. If we can help you, we're going to help you. If we can't help you, we'll try to connect to somebody else that does is able to help you. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever those challenges are, let's lean on each other a little bit. Because one of the things, one of the worst things about this particular crisis is that it's impacting everybody. Uh, one of the best things about this crisis is that it's impacting everybody. We're all together on this thing. So we're all going to come through it together. And I have a feeling we're going to actually come out a little bit stronger at the other, the other side of this because of we're always stronger when we support each other. So that's being scrappy. I, I want to share one more scrappy story uh, from my past. And if, again, if you have any questions or have anything you want me to comment on, please go ahead and feel free to, to post on here. But just one more scrappy story is when I was an undergraduate uh, uh, undergraduate person, I, I, a lot of you maybe don't know, my background is engineering. Before I got into business consulting, I was a chemical engineer. And as I worked in engineering, one of the things that, uh, that I had to do was I had to work with uh, in a lab and I did research on biodiesel fuel and one of the things that we had to do is we had to run all these series of tests and take all this data and we were showing like the conversion rates of triglycerolysis and all this crazy stuff that I'm just barely can remember right now uh, and I had done all of these lab studies and everything we were about two weeks before going and presenting this major paper at this conference and it turned out that I had been doing the research wrong like I had been running the lab results wrong and the professor that I was working for had figured that out. Uh, we figured it out about two weeks beforehand. And we had been working on collecting data for like two months. So, I mean, it was running lab after lab after lab. We had this little pilot plant and we were just running this lab, uh, you know, trying to get all this data. And so the question came up and he just said, you know, how we got to collect, redo all this data in two weeks and change how we collected it. Now, I had, a, I had a choice of how to respond to that. You know, at first I'm like, there's no way we can do two months worth of work in two weeks. There's no way. And also there's a little bit of a woe is me kind of an attitude like I really screwed up. I'm the one that messed up how the data was being collected in the first place. So it wasn't good data. So I mean, I, it was it was on me and I started feeling sorry for myself a little bit and like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? And I'm gonna feel sorry and I'm gonna go just, and then I kind of caught myself. And I said, you know, no, 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 no. If I were to do this, if we were able to collect the data and get it done in time and get it done in time to present, how would I do it? I started asking myself different questions and I started to have to be really vulnerable. I had to go to other people I work with in the lab and admit to them that I had made this major mistake and that I needed help. And they really stepped up. People worked around the clock to help me run this pilot plant. Uh, we figured out different ways to be able to study in the lab when we had to do homework and things like that. Uh, we ran the lab, I mean, 14, 16 hours a day, just constantly trying to run it to, try to catch up. And we made it, we made it, we did it. We finished up all the data that we needed. The data was good. It ended up being a good paper. It's been published multiple times. You want to have something fun, Google my name, Don Harkey Biodiesel, uh, and you'll actually see some uh, some of the results from that paper. That paper's been cited multiple times. Well, it all came back to being scrappy. Uh, it came back to not saying, oh my gosh, this isn't fair. The situation's terrible. It's really about us working together uh, to, to figure out what we can do. So that's my message for you today is we just hope that you're gonna be scrappy through this thing. Look, I get it that it's not easy. Uh, I see some friends online right now. Jeremy, giving you a shout out in Chicago, man. Stay safe with you and your family. Uh, you know, Jeremy's over at Northwestern University. Their world's been rocked right now. Uh, universities don't get as much stuff done without students. Actually, probably get a lot more done without students, but they probably don't make as much money and that's not, probably not what he started off with. Uh, I, I see my nephew, Mark, online. Uh, you know, Mark, I know that it has probably impacted his job. Uh, I see people from our own team. I see Sherry Lee online there from Salem. I know that's probably impacted them. I know that's delayed a big fundraising event that they have in the future. Look, we can all look back and say, look at all these things and how they negatively impacted us. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be those things that happen to us that define us. It's going to be how we respond to it. Okay. So 
Think about how you're going to be scrappy, right? Find the cash that you need, right? Work through. There's resources that are out there for this because we're in this together. Figure out how to innovate, which means going back to your customer and finding out what's different for them. Uh, it's going to be going back to supporting your own team, right? Make sure your team's clicking. Make sure you're listening to them. Make sure you're working with them. Uh, and then last thing is support each other. Support the community. Uh, ask somebody. Reach out to somebody and say, hey, what can I do for you? How can I support you? We're putting that offer out there as people-centric to the community right now. If you need something, please let us know. Can't guarantee you that we're going to be able to do it for you, but if there's a connection that we can make or we can circle the wagons, and we can definitely get through this together. So appreciate everybody's time right now. Uh, we'll see you later on Facebook Live. If you have any questions or anything else, let us know. Please, you can post comments on here. We're going to be monitoring this for a while. And also go check out our peoplecentric.com crisis management toolkit. We're going to be doing series of live events like this. We've got a webinar coming up tomorrow. We're going to talk a little bit. Of, Matt's going to talk a little bit about how to maintain your culture and work on your culture. Uh, so just watch. You've got lots of stuff, lots of resources that are gonna, we're going to make available out there for you all. So come join us and let us know if you have any questions. Thanks for joining us live right now.